Ihe na di he ko mu me O ne me Ihe na di he ko mu me O ne me Ihe na di he ko mu me Ihe na di he ko mu me Ihe na di he ko mu me it's a, a quite an interesting sort of event to see of all people simon Ekba speaking in, so, in support of ob so to say or maybe in a cover of using ob and elections to demand rights to the u.n to also remind them of the call for referendum but let's have you react to this yeah i, I want to make clarification whether this uh, Simon Ekwa was the one that I don't know in Finland the yep, yep the same one and warrant of address yes one and only is this same person the one that said is the uh, prime minister of uh, um, indigenous whatever? people of Biafra uh, prime minister of whatever is yeah. it the same person the same Simon Ekwa okay and this is the same side also he is wearing a lot of togas man he is wearing a lot yeah. of toga toga one toga two toga three. yeah so in, in this case he now, also said there will be no election in biafra land and also <laughs> uh, mocked to be that no, they didn't vote for him and all of that so we're so, wondering why who so, is this simon fine Edmar? fine that is why i i take cognizance of all these steps i'm yeah, raising absolutely. step one step two step mm -hmm. two and then now for to be very frank in that letter uh, one thing is true burning of markets yeah. it's supposed not to be uh, we know of that i was also beginning to think of uh, simon Equator to bring maybe very exclusive new exclusive that will stunt the court because i told you that it's before the court now yeah yeah so if you now bring the line of that things we are born mm -hmm. uh, the same rigging of election that is not new to the court all of us we are aware mm -hmm. you don't need to stay far and tell us that here we know we know it and it's before the court. I supposed to be impressed. By hey, hey, guys, you know, everybody has been asking why I haven't speak about uh, the Biafran government in exile. So, guys, it is a very good thing. I'm so happy. And I'm happy for, you know, the way things are going. Like, you know, Obi will always want things to progress and we make sure that we get the right information to people. We want to speak the right thing and also make sure that the right information has been passed to the public always. Now guys, Simon Ekman, who happened to be the Biafran Prime Minister in exile, have, you know, with his team, they have put on a very wonderful map of Biafra. And this map is actually open according to them. They say that those people that feel marginalized or those people that think in any way that the map should be adjusted or be added or something, should get to them. Also, there are also, uh, Matt Simon in his um, speech also said that um, the map is also open for those who wanted to join Biafra letter for referendum. Now, it is a very interesting thing that all this why that Biafra struggle has been going through, you know, under Mars in the canon. It takes a lot of things that they have not been reviewed. There's never a time that the map is out. Always they ask, Mazin and the can say old Biafran, old Eastern. But now it has been a reality that some people, some very diplomatic people, have come together to structure Biafra. And you know, the, the, the story of Biafra will continue to remain there. You know? We wonder what will happen next as Nigeria continues to battle in their legal election, the election that have not been recognized among people. Except the INEC and those that have told they have the power to rig Nigerian election. That's the only people that recognize Nigerian election. Now people are waiting for the um, courts to see if the courts still validate Tinubu's election. But people of Biafra have moved on. You know, I told you guys, if you watch my previous video, I told you guys that Simon Eber's strategy and the people of Biafra's strategy was actually made easy by Nigerian government when they could not conduct a genuine election when about 80 nigeria is about 200 million people 80 million registered only 
20, only 22, 23, only 22 or 23 people voted for election, which is not up to 50%. That tells you that Nigerian people want to go their separate way. Now, we continue to drag this. There is a, a thing that coming out recently whereby some certain people, some, some people from the West say Yoruba job for Yoruba, and the northern people are also saying that Igbo should go. And Igbo say, I want to go home. That tells you that the country is actually not meant to be together. Today, everybody wants to go their way, but they don't have those I've scared Igbos, they don't have those, you know, those what they call it, balls to speak the truth. If majority of your people are saying that we want to stay in our own area, the other people say we want to stay in our own area, then why can't you guys make it possible that the Biafra should go, the Oduduwa should go, the Arewa should go. They can work on international relationship to be one if they want to. You know what I mean? They can trade. They can do the way we trade with Ghana, Togo and other places. That will be more peaceful. All these people protect their ethnic group. Yoruba will protect ethnic Yoruba interests. Igbo will protect Igbo interests. Also, we protect outside interests. Than fighting, always fighting and killing each other. What will happen today? Nigeria is dysfunctional. Nigeria is disintegrated because of the tribe, because of they are not meant to be together. If you go back to the history of Nigeria in 1914, all it down. It's all about war. This ethnic group want to go and this want to go. You know, the Alsace want to go. Zeke and others can call them to be one Nigeria. And the Yorubas thought about their own, they want to go. They say, okay, Igbo betray them during the election. You say, all this is just a problem. So how can we achieve a very, you know, um, diplomatic and conducive environment? If the only way we can achieve this is by the regional disintegration. People should go their way. If Nigeria wants to be together, they have to sit down, sit down and stress it. And a lot of things they have to iron together, which cannot be because the Northerners may not be comfortable for Igbo to be a president. The Yoruba may not be comfortable to Igbo to be a president. Igbo is not comfortable for Yoruba to be a president. Igbo is not comfortable to Northerner to be a president. Yoruba is not comfortable for Northerner to be a president. Yoruba is not comfortable for Igbo to be a president. This is just the simple thing. Whether you believe it or not, that tells you there's no way these people will be together. And it only takes time. When you keep pushing people to the wall, one day they will get there. One day Igbos will get there. And when Igbos get there, revenge is very dangerous. And then the people will be wanting to you know, disintegrate and there will not be a way for you. It will be more bloodshed because payback is very dangerous. If you want to go there and then Nibos will say, it is our time to pay back what you guys have done all these years. So we don't want that to be. I'm somebody who loves peace. I'm somebody who don't want people to lose their life for the sake of things that will be fixed. Today, the Biafra people have established their region, which currently the Biafra government in exile, led by the Prime Minister, Marzi Simon Eber, who will reside in Finland. And also they have a, you know, a view structure, a structure that is visible for everyone in America that you can visit and conduct some affair with the Biafrans. Now the Biafrans are also extending to other countries. Do you know that among Nigeria there's no other ethnic group that have representative in every country like Biafrans? With such opportunity, Biafrans today are telling the world that we want to leave Nigeria. And they want every good people of the world to join them in making sure that this thing come reality. People ask why is Biafra want to go away? That Biafra have given so much to Nigeria. That Biafra have actually helped Nigeria to be where Nigeria is today. The world is hearing about Nigeria and saying Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that. It's only because of Biafra's. Biafra's today have been the one that developed most of the areas in Nigeria. You ask yourself, how many Yorubas owns a state in Igbo land. How many Alsas have a state in Igbo land? But you cannot tell me that I cannot be able to count how many Igbos have a state in Yoruba land. How many Igbos have a state in Alsa land? That tells you who is Ray Nigeria. 
the Igbos really want Nigeria to work. Igbos can come to your area. They will develop it. No matter the amount that you put on your price, you tag on your land price, Igbos are ready to buy it to make sure that they help you to develop it. Igbos are the one that will come to your area. They will bring business in. They will bring a lot of things in to make your area you know, viable for everybody to enjoy. But at the end of the day, they become a victim. Those people will begin to tag them, dominant. They begin to steal from them. They begin to burn their things. They begin to create a lot of all scenarios in order to steal from the Igbos. Then you ask yourself, you that think that one Nigeria is in existence, how many of your tribe owns a property in Igbo land? How many of your tribe owns any investment in Igbo land? Who is more one Nigeria? If you believe in one Nigeria, what is stopping Yoruba Aosa to invest in Igbo land? You can't tell me that Igbo property is very expensive. You have, actually Yoruba have more than the top three, top three richest men in Africa. Yorubas have that. It's not Igbos. Aosas have the top one, the most richest black man in the world. They can buy any property in Igbo land, no matter how, what price you tag on it. Do you know that the current president you call Bola Tinibu has no, I always call about the United Nations and EU, UK and America. It's not when we have bloodshed. Why can't we prevent this thing before it escalates? We can do better by calling these people together and say what you guys want. If they don't want to be together and let them go so that we make sure that people are with them. Let we conduct referendum so that their people can vote if they want to stay in Nigeria or go. If their people vote to leave, then why are we staying together? We can't continue to oppress the Biafran because of we want to steal oil from them. We want to steal diamond from them. We want to steal a lot of things from them. It's time for Biafran people to go. The Biafran government in exile, led by Mazi Simon Eber, is not going to stop. Daily he travel around the world, try to communicate and tell the world why Biafra need to leave. Before the Nigeria election, he actually made it clear and said that this is a corrupt. Mazi Nandikano actually said the same thing. It's a corrupt. Mazi Nandikano tell you that, how can you tell that your election or your vote counts? That is the INEC that votes and pick whoever it is and say you'll be our president. Not people vote that count. Mazi Simon never told you again that it's a full of corrupt people. It's criminals. It's not working. So guys, we must have to do this. Biafra have to go. And we give credit to Mazi Simon Eber for what he's doing and his team. As we see the map again, we have seen a lot of good map. And we appreciate those people from the Biafra. Today, a lot of good friendship have been forming by those people from Ijo, all south, south, and southeast. They have been one now. And it's good for the consultation to continue to go on and for them to be a good people.